So here's, yeah. the, here's the intense question. Should we imprison mothers who have abortions? So my answer is always this. What is abortion? Abortion, uh, this probably was rhetorical, but here we go. <laughs> here we uh, go. Well, and, and again, yes, yeah, so, so I suppose it depends on how one answers that. From a pro-life perspective, then if you, you were, were to answer... It's, it's, the, it's the direct and intentional killing of an innocent human being. being. So the question is, when you have laws against the direct and intentional killing of an innocent human being, yep. and someone breaks that law mm -hmm. and therefore directly and intentionally kills an innocent human being, should jail time be a possible consequence yes. for anyone who directly and intentionally kills an innocent human being. Yes. And when you put it that way, people will say yes. But the moment it's put through the lens of, should women who have abortions go to jail, people think, oh, this is gonna make me sound terrible. And I would say saying that women who have abortions should go to jail sounds terrible and is terrible if there's nothing wrong with abortion. But if abortion is brutally dismembering, decapitating, and disemboweling the body of a baby, and someone participates in doing that, then why wouldn't we have a consequence legally for the parties involved? Then I provide more context and say, in the present reality, women who have abortions, men who are involved in abortions, so on and so forth, are not currently breaking any law. Hmm in places where abortion is permitted. So I am not suggesting that we take all women who've had abortions and put them in jail. They have done so, unfortunately, in a climate in which that is not unlawful. Okay. And it would fill our jails with a good number of, of women in society. What I say is the question is once abortion becomes unlawful, if someone breaks that law, should, there be Should jail time be, and I always say a possible, possible consequence, yeah. because say, when yeah. you kill your born children, and there was the case of Andrea Yates who horrifically drowned her, I think it was five children in the bathtub many years ago. Oh, Lord. I believe in her case she was found, at least in Canada, we would call this NCR, not criminally responsible. Um, sometimes they analyze the situation and find the person was not of sound mind and so on and so forth. And there often still is some type of consequence. They might be in a type of jail hospital for mental health, but it wouldn't be a type of jail per se uh, that you and I would envision if someone. And yeah. my point is though, that people say, well, wait, we have laws against killing born kids. And so if you're gonna drown your kids in the bathtub, this is a possible consequence. And each scenario will be looked at. Was this person of sound mind? Were they not That's of sound right, mind? Yeah. And so the same would happen once abortion becomes illegal. Um, in each case where a woman is found to have actually had an abortion, uh, it would have to be analyzed. Was she of sound mind? Did she actually consent? Was she dragged there against her will by her parents, by her boyfriend? Um, and, and all of that would, would have to be looked at. Um, and, but I am a firm believer that we have to be consistent and we have to treat the pre-born like we treat the born. And if I believe jail time should be a possible consequence for those who end the life of born children, then consistency compels me to say jail time should be a possible consequence for those who end the life of the pre-born. I'm gonna ask you a question right now, which I'm <laughs> nervous to ask oh, you. Oh my goodness. I'm nervous to ask you this question. Um, and I'm gonna give you full freedom to dodge. Whoa. All right. Yeah, or to full freedom not, in front of the cameras. Or if not, <laughs> if not to dodge, then to say, I'd like to think about that more. Okay, okay. Here fair it enough, is. fair enough. If, if I knew that someone was coming into my house last night to dismember my children, mm. then I, I, would, I would do whatever, you know where this is going, wouldn't you? Yes. I, I, I would do whatever it took to stop this person. And if right. the only thing I could do is to, in trying to stop him, I kill him, then this would be justifiable. Why shouldn't we or should we be attacking abortion mm. doctors? Should we be assassinating them? Or if not assassinating them, should we be breaking their hands? And if you want to say no, because I get that that sounds rather vulgar, then you have to explain to me why. Right, right. So no, we should not be shooting abortionists and, and, and using violence as a means to achieve our end. Why? Because you, you agree with me that I can, I can use violence to stop the intruder. Right, right. So in this case, what I often point out is that we have to look at how abortion is different. So we need to look at how it's the same okay. and where there are parallels. Like we're dealing with a born child, we're dealing with a pre-born child, the common factor is child. Born, mm -hmm. pre-born is irrelevant, key issue is child. 
there's always similarities and differences with every comparison. And so in the case of an abortionist, an abortionist is not going to do an abortion unless a woman presents herself at his clinic and freely enters into that clinic mm -hmm. and lays her body down and invites him to enter his bo her body with mm -hmm. the abortionist instruments and dismember the child's life. So you don't have abortionists running around killing preborn children. You have them as hired hitmen mm. being enlisted by the mothers, sadly, and fathers and so on and so forth of these children. They would not be killing these children if it weren't for if the, the parents, parents of the children. Yeah, presenting and the children for if execution. I could take the party that is about to be harmed and separate them from an environment where they will be harmed, I absolutely should do that and I absolutely should intervene. But because, and this is where it gets different, I don't have a born child who I can remove from the, harm, from the arms of a parent who is about to take that child, let's say, to a clinic to have a born child killed. So mm -hmm. I just pull the child mm -hmm. away. In the case of someone who's pregnant, I can't remove the preborn child. That preborn child needs to stay in the womb of the mother. And so I would say what I need to do is use my weapons of mass instruction. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> I need to use my powers of persuasion mm -hmm. to convince that woman whose child I cannot take from her to save to not even enter into the environment where someone will become a hired hitman. All right, let's 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 kind of get all philosophical and, and weird thought experiments. <laughs> this is not Pints with Aquinas, yeah, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, this is difficult to do on the spot. I mean, we've just gone over the violin argument and that's very intricate. So let's, so let's come up with some right. weird thought experiment, okay? okay. Uh, you're in a house, a mother is holding her born child. She has paid for a hitman to come into the house and kill the child, which she will hold for the duration of this procedure. Right. You, for some reason, <laughs> only have the ability to harm the doctor, because if you were to try and harm the child, the mother, you, you know, you, you would kill the child. Right. Why not? You know, in this situation, because right. in the last instance, you said you don't have the ability to take the child away. Right. Well, let's say you don't in this situation right. have that. Maybe right. you're in a wheelchair or something, but you do have a gun. Right. Uh, why not uh, shoot the doctor in the legs or something right. to prevent this from happening? I think when you're looking at not just an individual case, which is what your scenario is, yep. but it's an overall environment where you have this legalized killing, where you have a government often funded system. Yep, I mean, yep. I know it's a little different in the United States than in Canada. There are other factors that you have to look at when making responses to individual cases, looking at the overall picture. So the question is, are you ultimately going to succeed in achieving your end goal by way of using this almost vigilante violence, people start you know, shooting abortions, which is the point of the scenario to say, would it be okay to do this? Um, we're, we're not. Uh, when we've had cases where random individuals have gone and shot abortionists, it's not brought an end to abortion. It has not resulted in a decrease in abortions. We still have, you know, no, I, I would say roughly I, I the same back. rate of abortions. Because the reason I'm, I'm, I'm firing at the intruder isn't to prevent all murders and intrusion. Right. The reason I'm firing at the murderer is to prevent him killing my child right. or right. somebody else's child. Right. So I'm, I'm pressing you here because yeah. I think there is an... I'm not making the claim that we should harm abortion doctors, but... You want to make... I, it seems to me that... You, you want to be able to make the argument why we shouldn't. So it's I, not it's that... It's not even what I'm doing. Oh, okay. I, I don't even want to make that argument. Okay. It just seems to me that you as someone who is pro-life, who thinks that children are being directly targeted, it seems right. to me that you ought to say that we should attack pro-abortion doctors. Because the point isn't yeah. to end all abortion when I attack... The, and I'm not advocating this. <laughs> I am not It's going to come across that like that. You're going to be quoted, Matt. I know. You're going to be quoted. I am not advocating that anybody harm... Uh, any person, okay, to make that clear. But we're, we're using a thought experiment, and this thought experiment right. has included drowning children in, in lakes. It has included uh, violinists being right. killed. So this is yes. hypothetical, okay, right. theoretical. But, On, from, we're having an intellectual... But I, I find it yeah. difficult that if I was to accept your position, that I wouldn't be able to also concede that uh, it would be morally justifiable to intentionally attack hired hitmen. I find that hard to accept that that's not a morally acceptable thing to do. If I agree with everything you've just said, 
about taking an unborn life. So there we go. <laughs> do, do you see my problem? You don't, we don't have to keep talking about yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see what you're this saying. This is something I would like us to think about more. Here's what I can, if I'm in your shoes, I can see you not wanting to be honest about this because it affects the pro-life movement, right? If we start blowing up Planned Parenthood clinics, if we start shooting doctors, which I'm not advocating. Right. Uh, <laughs> if, we, if people were to start doing that, that would set the pro-life movement back decades, generations. The question is, because someone could say, well, you, you might have someone who, who will say, well, I don't actually think it is morally objectionable, but I think it's strategically wrong. Okay. And that's not something that they would they would hide. Okay. Right. So, but that's not so, your but, position. But I, I certainly condemn it and don't think it should happen. As we're talking it through, it sounds like I don't have as strong an argument, maybe, yeah. to actually explain the position. Right. But nonetheless, I'm holding the nonviolent position. Good. I mean, Good. I guess it, it could kind That's of be honest, like... That's an honest thing to say. Yeah, it would be like um, uh, well, it would the, be like, the civil it rights would... movement, Dr. Martin okay. Luther King Jr. Um, he or Gandhi, um, they they chose a nonviolent means to achieve their end. Um, perhaps someone could argue that... When So, for example, actually, let's take the cases um, uh, where the civil rights activists under the leadership of Dr. King would, would have these nonviolent seminars where they actually practiced cracking eggs on each other's heads and, hmm. and, and, and swearing and, and using vulgar comments to the other. This, I've um, had this happen to me in a, in a men's initiation rite of passage, which we can talk about later <laughs> oh, if you want. It wow. was super intense, <laughs> but a blessing. So, right. So, well, fascinating. Yeah, yeah. So, so they, they acted this out in the safety of their own people yeah. without reacting so that when they went to the whites only right. lunch counters yeah. and the black people would sit down in those seats that were supposedly by law only supposed to be for whites the blacks would sit down and then in real life the the actual you know racist thugs would come along and break eggs on them and mm. and swear at them and they didn't respond and when they were physically touched and attacked and pulled they didn't react now you could argue they on a technical a right level yeah. When you're under attack, the principle of self-defense is such that I have the right to use the amount of force necessary to That's stop right. an act of aggression. That's right. So could those nonviolent civil rights activists um, use the amount of force necessary to stop the act of aggression happening? Yes. But they chose not to. They mm. said, we don't believe it's strategic. Uh, we're not going to choose that path. This is the path that we're going to take. Um, and so I think perhaps in some way, as I'm talking it through with you, that analogously is what people could say is I'm choosing the nonviolent path. I'm condemning, you know, violence towards abortion doctors. Um, I'm not using force in response to this. I'm choosing this particular strategic path. Now, could someone come back and say, yeah, but, it, but, but, you know, it doesn't sound quite right. Well, maybe it doesn't. Maybe it doesn't sound like I have a solid explanation but nonetheless, my position I'm still holding like is that. one of yeah. nonviolence. Well, I appreciate that because just like you said, you were stumped in that debate regarding the liver example. Right. You know, suppose you remain stumped and were not able to answer him. You could right. still hold to the position that abortion's wrong because that is more true to you. Right. Perhaps, than right. Knowing. So it's like I, I know this, but yeah, it, it I'm doesn't. Gonna hold, I'm going right. to stay here yeah. until I think this yeah. through. Which I, yeah. I have to say, as a side note, is why I appreciate these shows so much. Mm. Because I mean, up until recently, we haven't had the ability to do live videos for this long. Right. right? It's yes. been EWTN interviews where you've got like three minutes. Why is porn immoral? Why right. Is right. Immoral? Right. Right. Go. Um, and what I love about this is that we get beyond the sound bites. Well, and we need people to be thinking through stuff and talking through stuff and not be afraid to go places where they don't have all the answers yeah. or where they don't feel like it's fully clear and wrestle with that yeah. and talk that through. Yo, thanks for watching. You can watch the entire episode on YouTube if you want. You can listen to it at The Matt Frad Show by subscribing on iTunes or wherever you listen to your podcasts. And feel free to support me, patreon.com slash mattfrad.